A um, lot of new and semi-new information today. We focused on your um, second string scale as your warm-up. So you want to go to the fifth fret of the B string and play down on the B string and up on the high E. So you go five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. This is the major scale. Do each one at least twice, slowly. And then we'll do the minor next week. For the active scale, start by just practicing your ring finger slide from two to four, keeping a nice curve on your ring. You can do each string a couple times each, except the G string is middle finger. Then you can do a hammer on each string, two to four. Then you can put the scale into play, which I, I rewrote in your book. these active because they have slides and hammer-ons. They're a lot more fluid sounding. Especially when you play them faster. That's your middle finger, of course. And G is the anomaly. Make sure you slide on two. And then everything lines up beautifully. You don't have to shift again. Okay, so there's your active scales. You can continue to do your blue scales when you want to. Um, the chord cycles uh, are the E cycle. And what we're trying to do is close the gap. So try to do two full patterns, no gap, like this. Ten, two, three, two, two, three, four, boom, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, boom. Good enough now that you don't need the gaps. Then repeat that for the G cycle, which is G4, C add 9, D, C add 9. Again, you don't need gaps. Um, when you do the C cycle, uh, which I rewrote in your book, you can start by just practicing these, this finger pair. Make sure they can move independently from C to F to C and back to G. Uh, and then practice C to F without moving your first finger. You have to teach your first finger that is staying put. And then when you go up to G, the pinky is just an afterthought. Um, and you can do the same thing with the strum pattern on this. You don't really need the gaps. The more we can get rid of those gaps, the, the more mature your playing will sound. Um, but your jokes will always be immature, of course. Okay, and we introduced two, which is capo two. Um, so on the surface, a real simple song. The strum pattern will challenge you a little bit, and then I want to get all the gaps closed so you sound like a pro. So we have G3, that's the principal chord, that's the key chord, going to C. That's the main chord pair that happens throughout the verse three times. And then finally, after three times, you play a long D, uh, your favorite kind. Um, the pre-chorus is when the chords move the slowest. So you have E minor, played with one and two throughout the song, to C. Middle finger stays put on that transition, just want to remind you. And then G3, you'll always use G3 in this tune, and D. So that's a good spot to introduce the strum pattern, which is you can do the full pattern on the long chords. So it's down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 So when you stay on a single chord, it feels like there's a gap in the middle of the pattern. But when you have to change chords quickly, you need that gap, and it helps you rush to the next chord, like this, like on the verse. So that gap is filled by your transition. And then you get to the long D and you do the whole pattern. If you take me back, back to your place. Try not to bother you, I promise. That will repeat, but I'm gonna go pre chorus. I'm flat. Full pattern. Okay, hey, chorus is like the verse, but it's E minor to C. And then a long G. It takes two, and it used to take more. Again, so that's down, down, up, rush to C. You gotta get rid of these gaps, no hesitation anymore. You're, you're, a, you're a rock star. It takes two, and it used to take on the wall. And stay on G for the next verse. Well, my money's no good. Um, 
etc. That's it, bud. Uh, keep using the last video for lithium and killing in the name of.